Hey guys, KRS Props here. Um, a lot of people have been asking me uh, for a tutorial on how to do dead mouse heads ever since I put up the video on YouTube about a year ago. And um, I finally decided that uh, the easiest way to answer everyone's questions would be to do a video. So today's video, I'll be showing you the first step on making your own dead mouse head. Um, this is using uh, this is a video on how to make the shell. So enjoy. There. Okay, so the first part to making a dead mouse head is you're going to need the shell. Um, in America, a lot of people that do um, the tutorials from uh, the US, they use acrylic globes, which they can get pretty cheap, but in the UK it's not so easy. So uh, I came up with a way of making the shell yourself and making it cheap. So what I use is um, these beach balls you can get. Uh, I ordered mine off Amazon. Um, I wouldn't trust the size that it tells you because every time I measured the balls, the sizes they gave aren't correct, so if I were you just get the largest beach ball you can find or just use the, the, the photo they have on the packaging to see whether or not it's the right size for your head. As you can see this one's obviously a bit bigger than my head. Um, and uh, what we're going to do is we're going to make a fiberglass shell for this. Now um, the problem with using fiberglass for this is the uh, polyester resin or the fiberglass resin we use will um, it'll eat away at the plastic and it'll make the ball warp from the air pressure. So what we need to do first is take some plaster bandages or mod rock and uh, cover it in that first. So we'll have a go at that. Sorry, so this is the uh, plaster bandage, as you can see. You can get this in any art store or um, online as well. I got off Amazon myself as well. Okay, so we've cut up our plaster bandages. I usually cut them to about that length. Um, it just, if it's longer than it is wide, it just helps it go around the curve better. And I forgot to mention earlier, but we, uh, we use these um, bottles just because today's got a light breeze. So um, we just want to make sure the ball doesn't roll around when we're trying to work on it. Um, we want to make sure that we cover the entire ball. That way the resin won't actually have any contact with the, uh, the plastic of the ball and uh, warp it. So basically with plastic bandages, it's really simple. All you have to do is dip it into some water and then lay it on and then it'll dry out. I forgot to mention this, but um, when you're making the dead mouse head, you're eventually going to make, uh, you're eventually going to cut a neck hole out, which is about an eight inch diameter. Um, so what you're going to see me do in a second is I'm not going to plaster uh, a certain section of the top. Um, this just allows me to actually pull the beach ball out um, by deflating it and also means that it saves the material that I'm going to cut out anyways to make the neck hole. Okay, so um, we've left this to dry for a bit now. And uh, the next step is to make the hard shell. So we're gonna be using fiberglass and uh, fiberglass resin, which is a polyester resin. Now this stuff uh, smells really bad, so you're gonna wanna do it outside. And, you'll get, and um, it doesn't just wash off. When it hardens, it's done, it's plastic. So you wanna put newspaper down onto whatever you're working on. So uh, first thing first, you're gonna cut these up. Okay, so now that we've cut the fiberglass mat, we're going to use the polyester resin um, <laughs> to uh, put it on here. <laughs> now, um, obviously, because this is liquid plastic, you're not really going to want to get it on your hands. When it hardens, it's going to be really hard to get off. So you're going to have to use um, something to protect your hands. So we're using latex gloves, and we want to mix it in something we can throw away, which cool. is uh, these plastic cups. So um, yeah, we'll get to now uh, I'm just placing the fiberglass strips that we cut onto it. The reason why I can do this is because I I forgot to mention before, but um, to make it easier, because I find fiberglass really tedious, I use um, some spray adhesive, which is the same as um, uh, the stuff that people use to spray onto paper when they mount it onto board. Um, you can buy it at any uh, hardware store. And um, I spray it onto the ball, which means I can just now place fiberglass mat right onto it and it won't sort of, you know, fly around and then once I've placed everything I can get straight onto um, pouring the plastic onto it. And you can either use a brush, a uh, disposable brush, to put the plastic onto the mat or you can just use your fingers when you have the latex gloves on them, on your hands, as your own brush. 
so uh, that's what we're doing now. Okay, so once we've done the fiberglass, we're going to let it set um, and cure. Uh, what we're going to do after it's set is we're going to check for little air pockets because um, any of these little air pockets you're going to want to remove. Okay, so right now you're just seeing us deflate the ball so we can take it out and use it again if we want to. Uh, what we're going to see in a second is we're actually sanding the outside of the ball. Uh, we do this because fiberglass is actually um, lots of lo little strands. And if a single strand on its own gets covered in plastic, it instantly turns into a needle. And that's going to be very uncomfortable to hold. So we're sanding it down with a low grit sandpaper. Uh, we're also going to um, go back to these defects that I talked about earlier. And we're going to sand those off using a Dremel tool because then that will give a better, more spherical shape. Um, once we've sanded that down, it's going to make it slightly weaker. So we're going to do one more layer of fiberglass after. Okay, so now we've, uh, we've, uh, we've marked out all the areas where it's a bit thin. As you can see with all these uh, red circles, there's actually quite a bit, so I think we're a, bit, a little bit sloppy with the fiberglassing, but um, basically to check it I was just using my finger and to see if it was easy enough to deflect it, so you can see that kind of that kind of bends in when I press it, and I'm using very little pressure, but in certain areas be, I, can't, I can't even press it down, so that, obviously areas like this are very strong. Um, you'll also notice the hole isn't particularly strong, you see it kind of bending like that. The reason for that is, is we haven't actually cut the circular hole out. When you cut the circular hole out, it'll be a lot stronger because it'll support itself. But um, we're going to add a little bit extra around here just, just to make sure that it's nice and strong as well. Uh, so we're going to do that. And then after that, we should have a, a nice finished shell. Done, yeah. So uh, now that we've uh, reinforced these areas on the shell, we're going to mark out the areas that we have for the mouth and the neck hole. Um, you can find online a couple photos that show you the dimensions of, um, say, the, the dimensions of the neck hole and dimensions of distances between the eyes um, and how wide the mouth should be and things like that. Um, I'll link the uh, images in there later, but basically I'm just going to use these dimensions to um, mark out everything. Uh, most of it will be done by eye, but uh, for the neck hole, the way I do it is I take a bit of string and I tie it onto a marker and then I measure on a ruler because the, uh, the neck hole is going to be 8 eight inch diameter I measure on the ruler 4 inches for the radius along the ruler and I cut it at that length and then I put either a, a block of wood or something something flat across the hole that we, ha that we left to pull the, uh, the beach ball out of and then I'm just going to just going to put my finger on the end of the string take the cap off and just draw around it using this and make a makeshift compass and that should give me a rough roughly an eight inch circle on the sphere that I can use to cut out so uh, we're just going to do that now and then we'll get to the next one okay so we've now cut out the mouth uh, we did all measuring by eye you really just have to check it loads of times I mean you can see we have loads of different colors of uh, lines on here, that's because we actually did it like four or five times just to make sure it's right. Um, you just go with what, what feels right, but make sure you always check back to the reference material with all the dimensions and stuff. But uh, now we have this done, um, I'm going to do the lips because the lips have about an inch thickness, which is really useful because um, the same foam that I use for the ears, which is the, uh, the foam floor mats, come in. Um... Sorry half an inch, they're half an inch thick, and they come in half an inch thick size um, standard. And uh, whenever you order the foam mats, they'll have these sort of side bars, which are really good, because if we cut off these little things, we can, uh, we can hot glue it onto here to make the lining for the lip and give it the thickness that we want. So if you see here, that'll provide the thickness for the lip and we just hot glue that in. So I'm just using my hot glue gun, and I'm gonna put it in. So that's the next step. We'll go to the next one in a minute. Okay, so um, we're gonna put the fabric on the helmet now, but uh, 
because it's a sphere we need it there's no fabric that will obviously there's no like spherical fabric or anything like that so we're going to have to stretch the fabric over it um, I use felt just because it has a nice texture um, and kind of sort of resembles the texture on dead mouse's heads um, so we I've got a bit, a bit of scrap here and what you want to do is you want to try to measure um, the length of one edge against this. So what we're going to do is we're going to do this in quarters because uh, when you stretch it, um, it gets rid of creases, but uh, it's, it gets more difficult to stretch the more fabric you use. And I found that if you do it in quarters, it becomes manageable. So what you're going to do is you're going to try to you're going to try and measure along one of the quarters. So from this edge of the mouth to this edge of the mouth is basically a halfway line. So what you want to do is you want to get a piece of fabric that can stretch from one corner of the mouth to the other and then also have a little bit extra so probably start with maybe an extra inch past each of the corners of the mouth then what you want to do that's that'll give you the length then what you want to do is you want to get the right width so you want to make sure that you can go from that halfway line down to the bottom of the mouth and then a little bit extra because you're going to want to be able to fold it inside over the lip um, once you have those two measurements, you can cut out a slab and you can get the stretching. As you can see, I cut out sort of like a rectangular slab here and there's this sort of curved cutout. And that's actually what I cut out after I'd stretched it on. Um, it'll change every time, but uh, you obviously, you don't end up using everything. So once you've done one, you can sort of use that as a template to make sure you use less fabric and that'll just keep down sort of waste. Okay, so what I'm doing here is I'm just taking the excess fabric and I'm folding it over the lip and I'm hoggling it down just to secure it. Okay, so now we've, uh, we've done one quarter. Um, we're going to move on to the other, the other three quarters. But one thing I just wanted to, to emphasize was that make sure you cover this area before you spray any more adhesive on. Otherwise, it's going to be forever and it's so annoying. Make sure you do that and everything will be fine. Um, also a note uh, to make is that when you do this section, the sections that go around the mouth, you want to make sure that your fabric goes right onto the corner of the mouth. That way you can fold it over without any trouble. Because if it doesn't, then you're going to have to trim it and it'll cause problems. They just make it more difficult, like here as well, just right into the corner. That way you can just fold it over nice and easy. And we've trimmed off the excess on the inside as well, and we've hot glued it down, so that's that should stay there. That should be fine now. And you can see that there's very few creases, if any, on the surface now. Um, one thing you want to be careful about is putting too much pressure on this, because you cut out the mouth. You can put a lot of pressure down accidentally, and you might crack the shell. So what you want to do is, when you're stretching this across, instead of stretching it by pulling it down like that, press your fingers against the lips and then pinch the fabric in your two in your thumb between your thumb and your index finger and just pull it down using the lips as leverage because that way you can put a lot of force into stretching it but you won't actually crack the shell by pressing down like that so okay so when you're uh, going to spray to do the other quarters you're going to want to cover up the fabric um, i think the best way to do that is to get a bit of newspaper and put a bit of masking tape along the edge and just use the masking tape and actually put the masking tape itself along the edge of the fabric that way you keep the fabric covered so if you do that all the way along the edge just to make sure that you cover every single piece uh, you can do this with multiple pieces of newspaper if you want but it's easier if you just do it in one single piece also if using the masking tape just means that you can be a little bit more flexible than with the newspaper. So we started the second quarter, uh, this back bit. Uh, obviously there's a lot of excess and like I said we're doing this in quarters so you're gonna have to trim this off to about a quarter. Um, so I'm gonna use a bit of chalk because uh, chalk's an easy way to mark on this black felt um, that we can just remove easily by dabbing it with a bit of wet uh, with a bit of a damp cloth. So um, 
what I'm just going to do is I'm going to mark out sort of a rough quarter line starting from each end of the mouth. Um, it'd actually probably be easier if you helped yourself by using a tape measure and wrapping it around and just following the tape measure. But uh, I'm just going to try to do this by eye. Okay, so um, the spray adhesive isn't actually that strong. It just helps you stretch it across without it pulling away. Um, so you can see it's, it's really easy to pull it off. So, um, and also in other areas, it's just come off completely. But um, what you do when that happens is you use a little bit of hot glue. Now you want to use clear hot glue in case you make any mistakes. Um, but uh, yeah, you can just use some hot glue, put a very small amount down and just sort of squish it underneath the fabric and that should keep it down nice and tightly and it will keep it down um, without it coming back up and uh, that might happen along the seam in certain places so once you've actually finished covering your entire head in plastic you might want to go back and check which areas have pulled up a little bit like here you can see that's pulling up a little bit so and you just add a little bit of hot glue you press it down again. But you want to make sure that you try to make sure that you don't get it on top of any of the fabric. But if you do, if you get a little bit on top, it's okay as long as you're using the clear hot glue. That's fine. Put the fabric onto the shell. You've actually finished with the main shell. So if you check the description below, you'll find the link to the next part of the tutorial. Hang out.